The GT4 European Series Northern Cup comes to play at the Nürburgring, the first of its two one-hour races this weekend. Track conditions very good indeed, a little flurry of rain, but we couldn't really spot it about half an hour ago on the circuit. But right now we've got uh, more blue in the sky than we've seen for a while. We've got an absolutely packed grid of cars. In fact, we've got 18 and a half rows of it. We've got uh, so many cars, but right at the front, it's Max Cobalt and Ricardo van der Ende, the pace setters this year. But look at that sky. I think that could have a role to play in this race. I can't see that from my commentary position. It's behind it. That is a very, very dark cloud. But the other end of the circuit, it is the Eiffel Forest. You get what you get. Track temperatures starting to fall. They hit nearly 21 degrees earlier today. But uh, those are interesting skies. Fabulous for photographers, but maybe not quite as good or as welcome for the race drivers. But uh, this ever-growing championship, GT4, is just booming around the world. And uh, the organisers must be very, very delighted indeed. More new faces this weekend. We've got the Schwader Motorsport team coming along with two Caymans to bolster the field. And bolster they have. And uh, various other new cars. A second car, a second Cayman from CD Sport coming out to play as well. And many, many new drivers dropping into the championship too. But uh, the BMW M4 on that pole position. Max Cobalt will start and will hand over to Ricardo van der Ender. They've already... Um, dominated this series but it's all the cameo roles of new drivers coming into the mix that uh, just keep everybody on the toes in gt4 reinhardt koffler will start the best of the ktms from the outside of the front row and then there's another ktm inside of the second row mad siliahaug and then the best of the mclaren zaba moore the hungarian racer keep their sure he and finley hutchison are going better and better they will start from fourth on the grid but right now with 19 rows of cars down here 37 starters we have a wonderful field of cars and uh, it continues to burgeon more and more manufacturers producing cars that are going to come out and play in this we already had uh, an amg mercedes show its face not long ago and many more will follow for 2018 but gt4 split this year into the southern cup and the northern cup uh, growing and growing. So there it is, confirmation the Cobalt van der Ender BMW will start at the front of the grid. Then two KTMs, number 14 and 64, the best of the McLarens and the best of the next class down, 54. It's uh, Ben Maz Mazartis and August Macbeth who will kick off from fifth on the grid in another of the KTM crossbows alongside, in fact, it's four KTM crossbows in the top six places. Lena Marionek, a race winner early this year for RYS team Kiska, who will start from sixth on the grid. The sky gets darker and darker behind that graphic, which suggests the second drivers in this one hour race might have rather different racing conditions than the drivers who start when we get underway just in a few minutes time. Even three pages, not enough on these timing screens. We've got 37 starters. We've got one extra car off the back of the grid. Dario Cerati will start the car from the bottom of the grid. There is Franjo Kovac and Cora Schumacher. And Franjo will start the Beza Group racing team came in from the back of the grid. A long way from the start gantry back to the starting lights down to uh, Kovac. But now we can see the cars in all their beauty. So a lot of KTM crossbows up at the front end of the grid. In fact, now I look at it, seven, five of the top eight, with the top eight being completed by the Academy Motorsport Aston Martin, our crossbows. But it's the M4 on pole position, and it's been so, so super strong all season in the hands. The Equus Motorsport BMW, it took three wins in a row. In fact, it wasn't off the podium until the first of two races, ironically, on the home circuit at Zanvoort. Maserati's as well, that's Fascicolo and Dal Antonio. So the last few members of the pit crews going back through the gate in the pit wall off the grid. And a pack grid, 37 cars. And off they go on their formation lap. So it's Max Cobalt leading around from Reinhardt Koffler. Just remember the best best place of the KTMs is largely got a red flash on the nose, a lighter orange tint on Mad Siliahaud team internet. X entry black Aston Martin you see there Will William Moore will share that with Matt Nickel Jones as ever the drivers not only be trying to get heat into their tyres and their brakes they'll be looking like mad at the clouds trying to work out where the rain's coming from if the rain is coming and if it is when that is the question 
McLaren there, white, black and blue. That's uh, Saab and Moore who will be kicking off in that. To keep their sure, they uh, lost out. They didn't get to... Penny Hutchinson didn't get to play at Brands Hatch, but um, they took second place last time out at Zandvoort. So definitely the uh, white and blue McLaren running fourth. Is going increasingly well. The team Pankel crossbow with August Macbeth on the board. Just remember that has a blue nose on that. Large and silver team Kiska car. There it is. So that's the Schoenrama car that's large and silver. That's in seventh place on the grid. It's called a little game called Know Your KTMs. It's very individualistic looking. KTM, but they can't be individualistic because there are lots of them up at the front end of the grid. Whereas the uh, pole sitting M4 BMW from Chris Motorsport with Max Cobalt at the wheel just looks remarkably simple in comparison, but clearly so super effective with those three wins two at Red Bull Ring and then one at the Slovakia Ring. So the circuit season started at Misano in April along with the Blanc Pan GT Sprint Cup, and then Brands Hatch likewise, and then broke clear to race something on its own at the Red Bull Ring, then Slovakia Ring in July, Zandvoort in August, and now here this weekend at the Nürburgring for yet more fun. Track conditions look very good as the field comes around. Obviously drivers checking everything and this is the final double header round of six. So, BMW M4, Max Cobalt, Reinhard Koffler in the red-nosed KTM on the outside as they form up into grid, grid order around this formation lap. Everyone behind looking tidy indeed. Need to get a move on at the back, but of course it's still about five corners to go, but the back end needs to move on or they'll really have lost out by the time... Oh, well, now the, the safety car... The pace car, if you will, has backed them all up and on the drop before we get the rise up to the chicane and the last few runners should be coming on the corner. In fact, there is the last runner. There is Franjo Kovac at the back of the grid. Just behind Dario Cerati's uh, Porsche, you can see number 75 up at the back end for Auto Orlando Sport. Field starting to pick up the pace, but the start will be dictated it's not like a restart the drivers will come around in grid order then they have to get the eye their eyes up onto the start finish gantry they're checking for those red lights i can see them from my commentary position they're just below the logo on the bmw empire bridge which is quite fitting because it's an empire the bmw waiting for the start can't see the lights they can now they're red the drivers are waiting 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 very late but off we go with green who made the best start and it looks so like the mclaren is very good from the second row of the grid as he tucked in behind the bmw the bmw is leading the way and reinhard koffer on the outside of the front row has been jumped so it's more into second place now he's taken a very wide line down into turn one he's confident there isn't enough of a challenge from behind and Koffler's got caught out. Koffler goes wide into the gravel. Oh, he starts on the outside of the front row. He's going to be about 30th by the time, well, about 20th by the time he gets out of T1 back onto the circuit. So good start from pole by Cobalt. Good run up into second place from fourth for more. Now how's the midfield going? Of course, 94, that's in the mix as well, but that should be higher up the order. That's uh, Nikolai Rockview. So really the big gain there was up into second place from fourth for the McLaren, Saba Moore, the big loss quite clearly, Reinhard Koffler locked up, just went a bit deep in the corner, don't know if there was a, didn't get his braking done, maybe it was a little bit slippery on the outside, but into the gravel he went. And now the car that started third, Mad Siliahaug in the best of the crossbows, having to defend from Will Moore, who's got a really good start, up from eighth to fourth in the Aston Martin. And the Maserati's running a little wide, down at the hairpin and uh, look down the middle of the order. We will have the recovering Reinhard Koffler trying to pick his way back up. Best of the Porsches in fifth place overall. That's probably number 222. I'll get a, an eye on that. There's 994 in the thick of the mix. 34 trying to pick its way back up the order. 34. RYS team Kiska car, then at Marionek. That uh, lost a little bit of ground on the opening lap. All very tidy in the drop, and then come up the rise to the chicane. Looks so like the 
Aston Martin starting to shape up for a look, but sticks in fourth place with Will Moore. The first two starting to break clear. If anything, I'd say Will Moore's being slightly delayed by Mad Siliahaug, but Siliahaug in third place. End of the opening lap, 0.6 of a second advantage, 0.684 of a second. Cobalt from Moore, a challenge. I said the Aston Martin was coming, he's going to run out of circuit there. But into third place, can he get the braking done? Will Moore hammering on the brakes to get to down turn one. Should have done enough to remain. remain. So start of lap two, we have a change for third place. And uh, Moore goes up to third into turn one. Very tidy move, but he had a good run onto the start finish straight. And Facilia Haug back down and now he's got a challenge because number four has gained a place on that opening that gained several places and that was uh, Alain Ferte Formula 3000 front runners all those years ago using the pace he's been showing in flashes in particular in the Southern Cup but this is the Northern Cup 37 cars out to play 37 cars completing the opening lap I'm just going to have a little look down the race order and see where number 14 crossed the start finish line. Number 14, Reinhard Koffler, 20th position. Don't forget, he started on the outside of the front row. Thirty-four pushing hard. That's then up Marionette, but he lost a place. And now Cobalt starting to stretch his legs. Starber Moore trying to go with him. Will Moore trying his best to keep up. But what we're seeing is our race leader is stretching his advantage. He's uh, gained six tenths of a second on the McLaren of the Hungarian race. Starber Moore on the first third of this lap. Nine-nine-four. That's Nikolai Moller Madsen, eighth place overall, being pushed very hard by. <laughs> you must feel there's a. KTM crossbow at every turn behind you. I think that's August Macbeth who's in yes, I think charging around with him. Yes, it is. They are the two fighting together. This is going well. Street art racing Aston Martin. You can just see it coming up the hill. Jerome de May at the wheel of that. Looks like August Macbeth is trying to take the place back and has just achieved it going into the final corner. Is he ahead coming out? Yes, Macbeth has got the crossbow ahead of de May's Aston Martin. Fastest lap of the race, set by our race leader. One, he's doubled his advantage, 0.145 of a second now. Street Art Racing, Aston Martin, it was past, had more grunts and uh, has regained that uh, fifth place. Sorry, sixth place. Down the start finish straight, 007, yeah. This is the seventh on the start finish line, but uh, got back ahead of August Macbeth, so he's up to sixth now. There it is, Cobalt, Moore. See, it's confusing, Moore and Moore. Second and third places, the Hungarian driver ahead of the Brit. The McLaren ahead of the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin has now got Mad Siliahaug tucking in behind, Alan Ferte trying to go with, then Jerome de May next in that grouping. You can see he's got plenty of company from Nikolai Molomadsen and August Macbeth in behind. The dark clouds that were gathering over the Nürburgring appear to have gone the last few minutes. It's suddenly become really bright. You can see this late afternoon sun making the cars look absolutely fabulous in this one-hour race. The first of two for the GT4 European Series Northern Cup. And uh, no wonder this series goes from strength to strength racing at some really fabulous circuits and producing brilliant racing. Saba Moore has now got real company because Will Moore and Aston Martins all but pushing him up the hill and tucked in behind Mad Siliahau, desperate to get in on the action. Four cars almost as one, but then in behind, ooh, nearly a passing manoeuvre for third place there. And joining them just after the shot, the number one, por number four Porsche. Oh, well, it's unfortunate. Saba Moore made a slight mistake, bottled up Will Moore, and no second invitation needed by Mad Siliahau. And in behind, a little bit of bodywork flapping, a little strip on the edge of the, the front of that number four Porsche. He is right in the mix as well. Just wait, there he comes, breaking way later. As they come up into the chicane, so Alan Ferte in the mix. Wonderful four-car battle, but what's happening out front? The gap was only 1.4 seconds between Jarba Moore in that McLaren and Max Cobalt. But Cobalt off into the distance. He must have gained about three seconds on this lap. Let's see what the gap is. Start finish line, 5.5. <laughs> he gained four and a bit seconds over the chasing McLaren. But McLaren now having to work so hard. And Matt Siliahau, his KTM being attacked by Alan Ferte. Alan Ferte... Uh, Certainly, suddenly relieving the pressure there on Will Moore, who made a well, just a brilliant exit of the first corner by Saba Moore. Will Moore slightly more circumspect in his Aston Martin. 
and gaining on both is Mad Siliaharam all over again. So the KTM crossbow driver getting right into the mix, but Alan Ferte was the driver who was making the moves last time around. He wasn't fighting so fiercely with the opposition, he was able to get his head down and lap. But there you can see the McLaren in second place, the Aston Martin in third, the KTM crossbow in fourth, and the best of the Porsche Cabins in fifth place overall. And now, oh dear, we've lost number 94. Well, that is very cruel indeed. That's Nikolai Rogovu. He'd been going very well. He, he uh, crossed the start finish line in 11th place, and I'm afraid he's over and out of the race. You can see he's lost uh, a carcass of a tire, or maybe a wheel. You can see the skid marks all over the side of the circuit, off the track. We've got uh, yellow flags. It's a yellow flag sector, sector one. Oh dear, you have to feel that number 22 was involved in that incident as well, unless he went off. Uh, that's uh, Jan Kasperlik, your v -barn. Fighting around, that was Jan Kasperlik who started that, just outside the top 10. Oh no, the bullet racing McLaren as well. So this has been um, a moment of several moments, perhaps. Bullet racing car, smoky way, that's number 33. That's very unfortunate indeed, didn't want to lose any racers in this race, but we've lost a handful. Stephen Patrick started that, was waiting for takeover by Andy Merrick later in the race, so Stephen Patrick still learning his way, but we can't put any fingers on any blame. We haven't seen the incident, but unfortunately we've lost a handful of cars, so 33 out, the 94 out, and the 22 out. Whether they were interrelated, you have to feel they certainly were. So the yellow flag still in sector one. And we have that change. Matt Siliahauk has just lost out and just been passed around that lap by the Porsche of Ferte. There you can see the sweep out of the stadium with sector one. It's on the exit of turn one where we've lost that little grouping. See the McLaren on the grass on the exit of turn two, down to turn three they go. Saber Moore holding off Will Moore in the Aston Martin. Saber now bounces over the curbs on the inside, gets pushed a little bit wide, a wider line through turn four from the Aston Martin race. Now here's a replay, just outside the top ten, up the inside we have a manoeuvre there. I think there's more to come in this replay because what happened up behind? Ah, Hick, you know, just looking to see... Well, it's two cars that seem to get 30 and 94. 94 ends up in the barrier. 30 gets to carry on. 30 is the CD Sport, Mathieu Chirai, Kevin Bolt, Bessonson, Cayman, which Mathieu Chirai started. Well, what we have now is a change of position while we're looking at that replay. We've got uh, Will Moore ahead of Saba Moore, then Saba washing very wide indeed. And suddenly, Alan Fete is going to be right on his tail. And it's also a mad silly hug. So a little bit of a slip up there from Saba Moore. Been driving very well. And again, he's left his braking very late and uh, slipping up and uh, slipping across the grass and through as Alan Ferte was thinking, what is that uh, car doing up ahead of us? Suddenly, as the McLaren rejoined the circuit, it certainly took Alan Ferte's eye off the ball. He's now got Jerome de May Aston Martin right on his tail and two more tucked in behind, two more crossbows. We've got Marionek and August Macbeth trying to regain places they lost earlier in the race. Alan Ferte right on the tail of Bad Siliahau. Somehow, after that double mistake from Zaba Moore, he's still on the circuit and still ahead of this grouping. But for Will Moore, he said, thank you very much. I will hold down second place now rather than third. But the battle behind. So, so tight. Zaba Moore somehow still in third place. But look how close it is for the grouping behind. Will Moore in the black. Aston Martin now second. But then Zaba Moore, Mad Siliahau. It's Al, and now Jerome de May in that silver Aston Martin going up the inside of Alain Ferte. Can he make it work? No, he can't. Discretion, the better part of Valor. He hits the brakes, luckily doesn't get clattered from behind. Then at Marionek and August Mabeth, right in behind, top 10 being completed by Nicky Leutfehler and Reinhardt Koffler there. Sarpa Moore's performance seems to be dropping away. I don't know if he started consuming the tyres with great vigour. Or was it his brakes? There is a replay of a move by Will Moore. He's not ahead at this point, but coming down the hill, he's taking the outside line. That's turn seven, down to the hairpin. Turn eight, he's got it sewn up. Sarpa Moore, wise by staying out wide. Didn't contest it when he realised that uh, Aston Martin at the inside line. 
now what's going to happen in before you certainly feel that uh, Mr. Rome de May is pushed very hard by Leonard Marionek in 34 you certainly feel that Saba Moore is going to be monstered but he's being helped at the moment because Alan Ferte there is sitting trying to see what he can do to bad Siliaug maybe all can calm down in, in the cockpit of the keep for sure McLaren it does have a little bit of clear air there it is in third place oh we have a clatter from behind Jerome de May has been given a thump by 34 Leonard Marionek lost some of his bodywork against the back of the Aston Martin couldn't see why that would happen this is lap six and uh, a big surprise there now you can see how tattered Marionek's KTM is well that's a, a absolutely surprising one no one was uh, breaking particularly heavy at that point but uh, bodywork disintegrating will that be called into the pits you'd certainly say it's uh, not just tatty and maybe it's not safe because various bits of the front end of that car could be dropping off so disappointment for the Kiska entry there started from sixth it's running in about seventh place when that happened but a, a big surprise too for Jerome DeMay oh dear they're falling at the moment that's the second CD Sport uh, car to be involved in an instant that's uh, number 31 and that was um, started by Benjamin Ritchie it's had a spin you can say well he's tried to drive through the gravels just about made it to the back but uh, front end contact the sister car with Mathieu Chiroy we saw off the circuit down on the exit of turn one but managed to carry on so Zaba Moore working hard now he's got real company because Mad Cilia how closer than he has been for a while helped by the fact as Benjamin Ritchie's Cayman sits there in the gravel front wheel not quite at the right angle helped by the fact that Alan Ferte is not on the city of Haug's tail right now so there he is in 64 able to press off and getting a far tidier exit as they run down the hill and now it's his chance to get his nose ahead of uh, Zaba Moore and don't forget it was into this corner that uh, Zaba had to cede position this time just manages to get the McLaren turned in last time he was challenged down there Will Moore and the Aston Martin uh, got down the inside and made it stick and this time Zaba Moore having to try really really hard to be defensive and only just keeping ahead of Mad Silly Haug incident between between car number 31 and 34 under investigation 34 of course was the team kiska car and 31 was the cd sport car of benjamin ritchie don't quite understand that they didn't start anywhere near each other on the grid get back to you on that one i thought the contact between 34 i'm sorry that i'm confusing my sisters that's marionette So, up front, leading easily, 6.8 seconds clear. Hardly seen him for a while, he's got such an advantage. We've got uh, Cobalt leading in the M4, just starts another lap. I have to crane my head, still can't see the second place car, which will be the Aston Martin, there it is, of Wilmore. Then the third place McLaren of Zaba Moore, still holding onto that third place, but look at the train of cars behind him. Moore, Cilia Howe, Ferte, Demay, Marionek, and August Macbeth, but Will Marionek be called in? You can see behind the silver Aston Martin, you've got the flapping front end on Marionek's car. Not affecting its performance, but certainly uh, fewer bits on the front of that car. One suggests they've been dropped out around the circuit, and you don't want to be dropping sharp bits of carbon fibre. And now, again, Saba Moore just struggling to get his car turned into the slower corners. You can see that tattered front bodywork, but it looks as Saba Moore is being challenged by Silly Haug, who is ahead in third place. It is this time just in front of Saba Moore. It is a question of when. Surely not if. Alan Ferte had been off Silly Haug's tail, buys a little bit of respite for Saba Moore because he is now back on the tail of Silly Haug. Silly Haug had a couple of laps attacking without Alan Ferte, but he's been delayed by Saba Moore, and that has allowed Alan Ferte in the white and red. Porsche Cabo to close right back in just under three quarters of an hour of this one hour race remaining or more to the point and now near contact Fertes clipped the rear of Matt of uh, dearie me of Mad Silia a big tank slapper and somehow he holds on to fourth place as uh, the Aston Martin Jerome de May got very very close indeed that was a, a fabulous hold but uh, unfortunately a little bit of contact and a, a slapper there uh, for Alain Ferte so that'll have woken him up a bit just as he closed in on the tail of Mad Silia Haug. That allows Silia Haug again a chance to attack without attack from behind, attack 
Saba Moore, but somehow the keep for short, McLaren is still there in third place. In fact, he hasn't lost track position, he's just lost well, track order, but he lost a couple of seconds, and that uh, KTM looking more and more tatty, number 34 in the hands of Lennart Marionek. So, on to another lap. Sarban Moore has now got Silly Haug right in his slipstream. A quarter of a second between them, but towards the end of the straight, the sleeker McLaren pulls away again. Obviously, different performance, different points on the circuit. Alan Ferte remains just ahead of Jerome Demay. The battle for seventh place then at Marionek, the tattered number 34. Still just ahead of August Macbeth, but August must be seeing the bits flapping, thinking, are any of those going to fall out and strike my car? 54 is Macbeth. from RYS team Pankel. In fact, now we've got two more cars joining the group. Reinhard Koffler and Nicky Leutwiller, the Porsche Cayman driver, number 222. They are in the top 10 and uh, getting closer and closer to Macbeth in the car that's flapping the bodywork. Number 34 of Lennart Marienick. Taking a tighter line into the hairpin this time, still holding on to third place, Zaba Moore, but he's now seven and a bit seconds down on Will Moore, who passed him really not that long ago, but certainly front end grip seems to be a problem for Zaba Moore, washing very wide, not so much in that corner, but certain other points around the circuit. Turn five springs to mind. You see there's some tyre debris at the side of the circuit, but City Howe can do nothing about Zaba Moore at the moment there. Gap is uh, swinging one way, singing another. Incident between car number 94, which is a RYS team Schoenrahmer car, Nikolai Rogiview, and car number 30 under investigation. 30 was the car we saw off the circuit, Mathieu Chiroy, but that was the one that was able to continue, whereas car 94 over and out. Certainly not looking as though it's come out of a showroom. Number 34 continues to complete the ninth lap of the race. I have good news. Will Moore has started to close the gap on the race leading BMW, but I think that's possibly down to the race leader being in among the traffic. But he came down by two tenths of a second and he's tried, he's tried, he's trying again. August Macbeth in 54 finally gets past Leonard Marionek. At the back of that little pack, we've got Reinhard Koffler in the number 14, RYST KTM, and he has just set the fastest set, one of the three fastest sectors of the race. So he is getting closer and closer to Macbeth. That's why Macbeth had to leap and very quickly make that move to finally get past Leonard Marionek. So look out for 14. You can see it in the background of your shot, tucked in, one, two, three, four, there it is, with the red nose. Red nose KTM, coming good as the race goes on. Don't forget, Koffler went off. He was outside of the front row and he went off into the gravel at the first turn. Came back on in a 20-something position, so that's been really quite a charge. That's been the sub-story of the race, but having seen this battling third-place grouping, it's hard to draw your eyes away from it, but he's now in the back of the group. There he is, third of those three te those KTMs, Demay, Marionek, Macbeth, Demay in the Aston Martin, obviously. The silver one there, just coming to your screen, 0 7 and now Macbeth is challenging him, a little bit of something flying in the air, I don't think it was off the Aston Martin, I think it was actually some of the bodywork that got tattered at that very point a few laps ago when Marionek uh, hit the back of the Aston Martin. Marionek, the meat in the KTM sandwich, and certainly Reinhard Koffler in that red nose number 14, fancies his chance of getting past both these, the fact he's gained about 20 positions to get there, little bits of debris all around the circuit, that fortunately is tyre debris, and Macbeth, having got ahead of Marionette, has had to hand it back uh, on last lap and uh, trying to take it all over again up the inside into the final corner. He'll do so. They'll probably push both themselves wide. And will this allow number 14, Reinhardt Koffler, to make a better move onto the start finish straight? Most certainly it has. Moore still under pressure from Mad Haug, but look for the KTMs behind. Marionette on the outside, the blue nose of Macbeth up the inside, and maybe up the inside of both. 
comes Reinhardt Koffler, he's definitely going to get inside Mariner. Yes, 14 now ahead of 34. Can't believe how that bodywork, the broken bodywork, is staying together. It hasn't visibly got any worse than it was just after the impact with the back of the Aston Martin. Drive through penalty for car number 34. Well, that's the driver there. Hard to see the number because a bit of bodywork is flapping away. So, for that contact with the back of the Aston Martin on your screen now, Marionek gets a drive through penalty. So, he just fallen from seventh to eighth. And that will drop him way down the order. Look how close that battle is. There is Marionette. Number 34 flapping away right in behind. He's got uh, Nicky Leutwiller in the 222 Porsche Cayman. But here is our race leader. 6.3 seconds clear. Max Cobalt, he'll be handing over at some point in this race when we get the pit window open, which will be fairly soon, to Ricardo van der Ende. But uh, sitting so strongly, clear championship dominators not just here at the Nürburgring, but across the course of the season. Three wins to their name already, and you'd have to say looking very good to add another one. The championship already in the bag in the Silver Cup. Lennart Marionek was best, next best place in that. Of course, he's just got a driver drive-through penalty, but the championship already in the bag in the Silver Cup for the top crews. Now, Alan Ferte coming good again in fifth place, the top of the Pro-Am runners. He's getting on the tail, tail of Matt Siljahaug, which again will relieve the pressure on Zaba Moore in the third place McLaren. And in for its drive-through penalty just before the pit window opens comes Lennart Marionek. That will uh, promote someone else to the tail of the top ten. It should be uh, car number 994, which should be Nikolai Moller madsen who's showing out with the new, one of the many new faces in the championship, Marek Bockman this weekend. So this enticing battle between the KTMs. Now it's August Macbeth against Reinhard Koffler, the white and blue car. Macbeth, it's number 54, stays ahead of number 14. Driving through, are they going to pull it over to work on the bodywork? No, they're not. It's, it's a drive through the pits. Wait till you've got uh, over the, the white line in the exit, then accelerate away. Where will he come out? Anybody's guess, just trying to pick out who's coming down the track. Bit of a gap. You can see the sin in the background. And the sin is running in 22nd position, so he's come out in about 20th place. Even Black Blackhoff at the wheel of the number 11 Sin R1. Well, Jerome de May has just lost a couple of positions. Just lost a position to Macbeth and Coughlin, number 50. Oh. Final corner and you go for a spin, that's unfortunate, but he's managed somehow to get it going again. And that is Piotr Chodson, so he was down towards the tail end of the order, but uh, he has lost a lot of ground there. So the pit window is now open. When will Ricardo, will Ricardo van der Ende get a go in this car? The number eight BMW in the hands of Max Kobel, who's drove, driven an exemplary race. He started from pole position, but has made all the running ever since in that and really produced a fantastic performance has it all under control I think they can pick their moment Will Moores having got into second place past the McLaren of Sharpermore has also been lapping well in fact last time he gained a tiny bit it's down to six seconds flat first to second second the third to fourth though is much much closer Sharpermore Mad Siljahaug if there's more than a, a two tenths of a second in between them in this battle for third place when they cross the finish line I'll be immensely surprised 0.291 of a second Alain Ferte keeping them honest keeping there in fifth place overall August Macbeth Reinhard Koffler in behind Jerome de May lost those two places falls to eighth place now we've got a whole host of cars including I think the uh, Art race, street art racing Aston Martin yes there it is in from eighth place but he had lost those two positions uh, right in behind though we have Nicky Leutvilla about to hand over the 222 TFT racing Cayman to uh, under Villarino so will there be a place change in the course of the pit stops pit stops kept uh, remarkably controlled by having a minimum time you can spend in the pit so it leads to fewer mechanics having to work on the cars and a few people trying to 
rushed that little bit too much. But there's the 34 car, of course, that tumbled down, way down the order, 20th position. Now they struggle to open the roof. Maybe they'll be able to tape up some of that bodywork. Now they're having a proper pit stop, but down to 20th for 34. And it should be William Meyer taking over from Lennart Marionek. Quiet in the pits for the first 25 minutes, and then suddenly a very busy indeed. So Max Cobalt leading by almost precisely six seconds in his BMW M4. There it is. Everything under control. Looking poised, balanced, very professionally presented. Not coming in this time around, staying out for more, having too much fun. Max Cobalt comes around to complete the 13th lap and there was no place order change the 222 Porsche coming out immediately behind the number set the number seven Aston Martin or the 007 the 007 as you would in James Bond world call it so Jerome Jerome Dumay has handed over to Julian Darras Morass racing entry, the McLaren, Luke Brahms and Duncan Houseman. But they're not at the front end of the field this weekend. Number 13 diving into the pits as well, it's getting busy in there. That's one of the two new Porsche Caymans for uh, Schweder Motorsport who've uh, come out to play in the championship this weekend. This car number 15 just leaving the pit lane, but race leader Max Cobalt now gaps come down again. 5.8 seconds his advantage at the head of the field. Still waiting for him to make his pit visit. Still waiting from, for Will Moore, the academy Aston Martin, to make its call as well. And of course, Saba Moore in third place. Majority of the front runners, majority of the top 10 or thereabouts, still out on the circuit. Yet, Chris M4 BMW flashing lights doesn't want to be delayed has been coming down first part of this lap he's responded slightly to the challenge from Will Moore but I do think a lot of this is down to where the traffic can be found out around the course of the circuit if this is going to be his in lap I think the body language is such that it is or is he just thinking alright I've got three more, two more laps to really really press but uh, Ricardo van der Ender I'm sure will be getting ready car number 44 drive through penalty for causing a collision Unfortunately for 44, that is the number on the door of Marilyn Niederhauser and Naomi Schiff in their KTM crossbow, RYS Team WP. And here is Max Cobalt into the pits. So I was just checking to see who was in that car. So Max Cobalt, his race is run, but importantly, he brought it in on a lead of about five and a bit seconds. Is Will Moore going to follow in in his Aston Martin, or is he going to carry on a little longer? No, he is coming in the background of the shot. We should be seeing the black Aston Martin coming in as well so they're in on the same lap they were 5.8 seconds apart won't be able to tell you if it's got any closer because one the garages might be before the start finish line and one after but uh, now that means by not having come in we should have Alan Ferte leading the race unless he's about to duck into the pit lane as well so looking to see if the number four entry from energy by ART that came and goes into the lead of the race. Not, still not listed as a pit visitor, but it looks like Mad Siliahaug has duck, ducked in as well. Zaba Moore is in from third, Mitt Siliahaug from fourth. It looks all very ordered. This Aston Martin has already made its pit stop. Julian Darras taken over from Jerome DeMay. Can we see any damage on the back? A little bit of scuffing, yes, where he got hit by the 34. KTM crossbow and at Marionette just getting that little bit too close and quite a surprising place to do it coming up the crest of the hill to turns 11 and 12 not an obvious place for someone to do any braking in fairness not quite at that point 24 stepping in over that wide edge Emil Westman sharing with Samuel Sladeka window still open but it's the likes of Alan Ferte who's now well effectively in the lead of the race but he has to make his pit stop with a handful of cars not coming August Macbeth hasn't come in in the 54 KTM crossbow and nor has Reinhardt Koffel who had the unfortunate off there's, there's Matt Nickel Jones coming out of the pit lane so he hasn't managed to jump 
race leaders. And as he leaves in his black Aston Martin, roaring away around the final corner, another Aston Martin, the street race, street art racing car. Car 75 under investigation for an unsafe relief in release in the pit lane. That's uh, Daria Chirati handing over his Auto Orlando Sport Porsche 911 to Maurizio Fondi. They started down at the very tail end of the grid. There's the system. Oh, well, there, there is a, a moment. Is it, is it? Checking if that's the Orlando Auto Landing car of Chirati. No, that's the sister car. That's the 76 Auto Orlando Sport car. That was uh, Giuseppe Jezzi and Manuele Mengozzi. There's the replay of the 75 car. Hmm, was indeed close. Right, with the front runners having made their pit stops, we're waiting to see the margin between Ricardo van der Ende, who's taken over the Equus M Sport uh, M4, Sport M4 BMW, and see how much his advantage is over Matt Nickel Jones. 14 trickles into the pits, that is poor Reinhardt Koffler's car. Don't forget, of course, we had that, uh, he ran off the circuit down at turn one, ran through the gravel, came out in about 26th place or so, managed to pick his way right into the back of the top 10. So really, really strong run there. Any threat of rain, I think we can safely say, has gone away. We have uh, 27 minutes this race remaining in the skies, as bright as it's been for many an hour here at the Nürburgring. So Aiki Angamea taking over from Reinhardt Koffler in the number 14 KTM crossbow. This is won by RYS team KTM. August Macbeth's car is in there as well. That will be uh, handed across as well to Benjamin Mazatis, RYS team Panko. Now, does that roof not shut or is it something inside they wanted to attend to? It doesn't appear to want to shut. It's going up, it's going down. Ah, uh, big problem for Reinhardt Koffler just needed to shut it a lot harder so Reinhardt's doubly cross with himself he's delayed that pit stop by two or three seconds which will not be pleasing him especially in a chase drive when he was chasing back up after that early early problem but he can't get much earlier to make a mistake in a race than the opening corner of lap number one which is where Koffler went down to turn one and through the gravel Benjamin Mazatis chairing with August Macbeth comes out onto the circuit. That car has been right up in the mix. RYS Team Pankel. So, now waiting to see where the number eight BMW will come round at the end of this lap. And what will be its advantage over Matt Nichol Jones? Jerome Demay pressing on when no, Jerome Demay it's, it's his teammate, sorry, Julian Duras. And here is the number eight BMW setting away. Ricardo van der Ende already vaulting over the curbs. Everybody has made their pit stops now. Pit window is just closed. And we have the message at the top of the screen. Right, 25 minutes to the checkered flag. Nice clear track one. Maserati in front of him, but importantly, where is the black Aston Martin? Won't quite be in the background. It was about just under, it was 5.8 seconds down before they came in from first and second on the same lap for their pit stop. Their one and only pit stop, they hope. Here the 62 Aston Martin, Matt Nickel jones at the wheel of that. But so he's lost a few seconds in the overall mix. He's approaching the chicane, coming out, out of the chicane. So, here we have our new, well, the race leader from the outset. He's, they've all completed their laps. Uh, their, their pit stop, there is the Aston Martin in the background, well, maybe it is about the same gap, it was 5.8 seconds between them, now it's 6.1, not much in it at all, so it's up to Matt Nickel jones to start winding it up, I'm fairly sure that Ricardo van der Ender has got the answers now, looking to see who's in the background, who's coming in third place, it looks as though it's the number four, yes, it's Gregoire de Moustier just coming down the slope, he should be in third place, drive through penalty for car number 21, that's one of the Allied racing cars. No, hold on a second. We've got Hutchison, who's listed as in third place. And Jerome Villarino in fourth. Then Jerome Demay in fifth. That's what we had there. OK, number four. Tucked in behind is Gregor de Moustier. But I think they're actually third and fourth, not fifth and sixth, because I think the others are still on their outlaps after their pit stops. Well, what I can tell you for sure, it's 6.1 seconds between first and second. 
And uh, Ricardo van der Ender in that number eight BMW leading the way, just gained a tiny bit in a combination of his pit stop and his outlap after those pit stops. And it's up for Matt Nichol Jones to see what he can do by way of response. In the first sector of the lap, he's pulled a little bit back, so the Aston Martin coming in. The Aston Martin we're looking at now. Julian Darras has got Grégoire de Moustier all over him in the chasing number four energy by ART Porsche Cayman down to the hairpin however it looks as though uh, Julian Darras gained a little bit of an advantage Mike Angemeyer tucked in behind them in the uh, black and orange KTM crossbow that's number 14 that was delayed of course in its pit stop actually that said the pit stop must have been pretty good but it was the getting the door closed that's lost position there the very point that Silver Aston Martin was clattered. You can see the bodywork still in the track when he was hit by the number 34 much earlier in the race, but too many cars on the track for a marshal to venture out from behind their position of safety to remove that bit. But all the drivers now know it's there. But don't forget, some of the drivers only just back out onto the circuit. So, right, the order for the top four positions is as it was before. Ricardo van der Ende is now leading this race by just waiting to see the latest confirmation as he gone, extended his lead. 50... It's come... Oh, he's almost doubled. Matt Nichol Jones now 12 seconds down. Much, much slower lap there. Should have been the race leader, two minutes and eight. Matt Nichol Jones lapping two minutes and 13, nearly two minutes 14. Now, was that one problem with traffic or simply just being cautious while he gets up to speed? It's very safe. Well, if he drops at that rate, uh, he'll suddenly have Finley Hutchinson challenging him for, for for second place. Hutchinson, yeah, the faster last time around. In fact, Hutchinson, the fastest driver on the circuit in third place. Faster than Ricardo van der Ende, who's leading the way. Number four, right in the hunt. Gregoire de Moustier leading Pro-Am class in that white and red number four Porsche. Not so far behind. Julian Darras, who's fourth, just gained a position and now someone travelling slowly of the car it's got a blue nose does that make it the team Pankle 54 yes it does so a short run there for Benjamin Mazatis and that was driven very well by August Macbeth so it'd be double disappointment for them and uh, I'm sure diving for the pit entry oh dear driving slowly at turn 15 most certainly is so that uh, eases things up a little bit at the front end number seven has had a good lap to get past 64, so 64 losing a little bit of ground with uh, Jamie Vandenbalk there. An advantage to the Aston Martin in fourth place. There it is from Street Art Racing, Julian Darras. Now, can Jamie Vandenbalk hold on because he's now suddenly got Gregoire de Moustier and Ica Angemeyer closing in behind in the crossbow. And there's another Porsche tucked in behind those and a Villarino in the 222 came in. So great jousting out on the circuit, orders changing left, right and centre. I still have no idea, it must have been a spin by Matt Nichol Jones because he's lapping as fast, nearly, as the race leader. He lost six and a bit seconds, six and a half seconds to Ricardo van der Ender on the last lap and now he's lapping, matching his, him, in fact, uh, just a tenth of a second slow this time around. So there must have been one spin and that's cost Six seconds chucked out of the window there. Six, seven seconds cost by Matt Nichol Jones. Haven't seen where it happened. Two seconds stop and go penalty. Message coming up on my time of screen for it, it always happens uh, for not matching the minimum pit time. Two seconds stop and go penalty for car number 77, and that's one of the Scuderia Viorba course Maseratis, Romy Dall'Antonio, and uh, Giuseppe Fascicolo now looking around this lap has met Nickel Jones picked up the pace again most certainly has for the Academy Motorsport crew so maybe he doesn't have to worry so much in fact he stretched his advantage in over Finley Hutchinson last time around could have been a bit of traffic but the McLaren in third place did not gain ground street art racing Aston Martin oh, it's a time to stop one two seconds at a standstill off you go that's what a two second uh, stop go penalty looks like The number four, Energy by ART Cayman. Getting right into the action there. Gregoire de Moustier now really almost pushing the 64 KTM around the corner. 
That's the RYS team into next car. Jamie Vandenbelt not showing quite the sparkling pace that Mad Sidiahaug did in the first part of the race. I mean, we're talking tents here or there, but uh, he is backing up that grouping behind, which is very, very good indeed. Very good news for the street art racing car because Julian Darras in number 007 can now concentrate on his racing lines. How's that for close? Welcome to the championship. Schrader Motorsports, Philip Bethke, Philip Bethke. One presumes Mark Basseng at the wheel right now. So it is, 13th place overall, but you feel Basseng is far from done. And absolutely shoving the 994 entry, Nikolai Moller Madsen around. Nikolai being very defensive, taking one line and uh, very, very twitchy. He's going to have to go around the outside. And I have a feeling Basseng's going to make that work and uh, clouting the curve on the inside, Nikolai Moller Madsen. But uh, the pass is made and as they drop down into the dip. Out of turns 13. Advantage to one of the two championship newcomers. From Schrader Motorsport. Various incidents under investigation. Car 112 under investigation. That's the RN Vision STS car of Pavel Lefterov and Jean-Louis Jasper for contact with the 54, the RYS team Pankel, Benjamin Masatis, August Macbeth car, which we saw limping in very slowly. But one car not limping in, one car flying around at the front of the field is Ricardo van der Ender's made look. But here's a replay, let's have a look. Have we contact? No, but by golly, how close could that be? Down at the hairpin, fantastic camera work, just showing how close these cabins can get. And there's 54, we saw it kind of limping into the pit lane. It's moving now, but only just the RYS team Pankel car. It obviously uh, went back out onto the circuit. And now seems lost somewhere in the Eiffel Forest. That's on the exit of turn two. Seems to have some motive power rejoining the circuit just as the track bends to the left at turn three. Matt Nickel Jones lapping almost identical pace but that little spin that cost him six or seven seconds has just meant the chances of catching the race leading BMW of Ricardo van der Ende really have come and gone press on as hard as he can but he was 5.8 seconds down well his car was when it came into the pits it uh, was pretty much exactly the same interval behind but then that spin as he just started to eke his way closer the BMW has uh, not cost him second place, but it's cost him a tilt at victory because down the start, finish straight we go, and that is what 12 seconds or so looks like. And if anything, it might have gone out a tiny bit. Let's see. Yeah, 12.6 seconds now. But still way clear of the chasing, chasing pack. You can see the McLaren in the background, the white and white car with the black bonnet and the blue flashing. Finlay Hutchinson, yeah, well, he took a, a little bit out of the race leader and a bit more out of Matt Nickel Jones, but he's only got a quarter of an hour. He's 7.6 seconds down. He may be able to get on the tail of the Aston Martin. Let us see where the conditions have reverted to how they were at the start of the day in terms of blue sky, almost wherever you look at the Nürburgring. But don't forget this morning, the track was greasy and been very cold overnight, possibly a little bit of rain as well. Now, conditions absolutely perfect. Van der Ender leading this race from Matt Nichol Jones, Finley Hutchinson third in his McLaren. Julian Duras fourth in the Street Art Racing Aston Martin. The best of the KTM crossbows is in fifth place. Jamie Vandenbout just holding off De Moustier, another drive through penalty. Or oh, stop go, I beg your pardon. Penalty for contact out on the circuit. Top car in the Pro-Am class, the white Porsche came in the middle of your shot, Gregoire de Moustier building on the work that uh, was put in fantastic opening stint by his veteran teammate Alain Ferti. Sixth place overall at the moment, can't do anything about uh, the car in front however. Aiki Angemeyer just holding on to that fifth place. But Angemeyer is just in the middle of the mix. In fact, we've just had a few places lost by them before. Let's just check who's tucked in behind. There is Daras in fourth place. Jamie Vandenbalk. Yes, so a place has been lost by de Moustier in this lap. And that's so uh, Angebaier has got past 
Gregoire de Moustier trying to get out the inside line to get the position back and does so on the way into the chicane. So it's dropping and changing and then suddenly Angabar loses about three positions. Found, found, found the outside line wasn't the best one into the chicane, into the final quarter of an hour. That was a, an awful couple of corners. Having gained a position to suddenly lose three must be very, very hard to take. And still the street rate art racing Aston Martin has that little advantage over Van der Belk, but enough. Van der Belk um, now has got De Moustier trying to see what he can do. So two KTM crossbows being chased, chased by Porsche Caymans. He's in the background, 2-2-2, two, 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 the white car with more red on top of it is closing in. That's under Villarino in eighth place overall, second in the Pro-Am class. Van der Ender finding things easy at the front of the race. There might have been a challenge as the car sideways. Oh, it's the background. It's the Patrick Bullet Racing McLaren still sitting at the side of the circuit. Just saw a flash of white in the, in the far distance. But really, the battle for around six. Oh, there it is. It's on the back of a truck being brought back in. I thought it was still sitting at the side of the circuit out of harm's way. But now it's in the foreground of the shot, not the background. So disappointment. Andy Merrick didn't get to race that. So the number four energy by ART Porsche Cayman has had a lot of battling to do. It's seen an awful lot at the back of the number 64 KTM crossbow from RYS Team Internet X. And it continues to be there. First of all, it was Mad Siliahaug holding off Alain Ferte. And now it's his teammate, Jamie van der Balk, doing exactly the same to Ferte's teammate, uh, Gregoire de Moustier. And having been in the thick of the battle, but then broken clear during its first stint in the hand of Jerome Demay, Julian Deras is enjoying that same advantage just near this pack in the street art racing Aston Martin. There it is, the silver car with the multicolored uh, bodywork up into the chicane one more time. This should be their 22nd time into the chicane. First two, first three cars already started their 23rd lap. 13.2 seconds between Ricardo van der Ender and Matt Nichol Jones, and then a, a gap of uh, just under seven seconds, 6.8 seconds uh, between Nichol Jones and Finley Hutchinson, who he continues to press on. Again, the fastest driver of the top three, but we are talking about by tenths of a second. And again, de Moustier looks to see what he can do down into turn one. Tight entry. Tightish exit, but uh, still stays behind Jamie van den Balk in the KTM crossbow. The light getting lower in the sky in the face of uh, a lot of the runners out at various points around the circuit. When, once you can see a driver's face fully illuminated, you know they can see much less than they could earlier in the race. The sun lowering itself down at the far end of the circuit, effectively down the bottom of the hill over the turn eight hairpin. It's still that little bit of uh, tape on the front of the Porsche Cayman flapping around in the breeze. Oh, and Gregoire de Moustier almost up the inside on the exit of the corner, but uh, Jamie van der Belk, it's almost so he didn't see him, just uh, kept to his line and continues to hold down a fifth place overall. A great shot in the cars. It just shows how dynamic they are out over the curbing. That wonderful uphill Schumacher sweep. Turns nine and ten. A little bit of a twitch there. Mikey Angemeyer, number 14 KTM crossbow. Carlo van der Ender starts another lap. Has he stretched an advantage? Is it coming down from Matt Nichol Jones into the final 10 minutes? You feel that whatever is gained is too little, too late. It comes down, yeah, very slightly by almost a, a 20th of a second there. 13.1 seconds, and still Finley Hutchinson chasing after, but in fact, he was slower than the first two cars last time around. You can be sure a bit of traffic was involved in that because certainly the Number 10, Akeet Vishaw, McLaren has been going very well in the Scottish driver's hands. Look how close it is in this battle. Fifth place, Jamie van der Balken, 64 KTM crossbow. Gregoire de Moustier tucked in behind in the number four. Pro-Am class leading Porsche. In Ike Angemeyer, we've seen him in a couple of little slips and slides. 
And 22-2-2, and a Villarino in second of the Pro-Am class and the second of the Porsche Caymans getting closer and closer, just to the tail of the group there. Just thought I'd point out, late stage in the race, lost the position on the circuit, but uh, leading the AM class is number six, 76. Which is one of the two Auto Orlando Sport Porsches, and that's in the hands of Manuele Mingozzi. Two positions up the track, ahead of the number three Pro Sport performance car, the Dieter Schmidtmann at the wheel. But nobody at the moment is doing anything to interrupt the progress of our race leader. Max Cobalt did a fantastic opening stint, and Ricardo van der Ende, as expected, absolutely matching that. To keep the advantage of about 13, 12 to 14 seconds, wherever somewhere in that mix over the driver who's giving chase, but had, having had that spin quite early in his stint, just soon after the pit stop, Matt Nichol Jones really can do very little more in the academy. Aston Martin, he's sitting on a seven second advantage, should be able to hold that for the final seven minutes of the race. But here comes Ricardo van der Ende one more time down the start finish straight. That's 24 laps done in the background of the shot. Matt Nichol Jones in the black Aston Martin of Academy Motorsport. 13 seconds almost precisely between them, so a fraction gain, but it won't be enough. There, down to turn one, breaking hard on the outside line, swinging the widest possible line around the circuit, around turn one. You have to set yourself up immediately for turn two. There goes Matt Nickel Jones, Finney Hutchinson out of the turn one, into turn two. In his number 10, McLaren. Again, he gained a little bit on both the cars ahead of him. He's now just uh, 6.7 seconds down on Matt Nickel Jones, but you do feel the clock is going to run down just too fast for him. And this wonderful battle. Jerome, after Jerome Dement, uh, Julian Darras in the number 007 Aston Martin. Uh, the 007 Aston Martin, street art racing, then a little bit of a gap, and then we get to Jamie Vandenbal, chased so hard by the number four Porsche, Gregor de Moustier. Ike Angemeyer and a Villarino. They, there is that shot there. And Jamie van der Balk in 64, resisting a huge amount of pressure from Greg, Gregoire de Moustier in the Porsche. And then number 14 tucks it behind. Ike Angemeyer took over from Reinhardt Koffler. You do wonder if they managed to get the door shut. We're in rather fewer attempts if we'd have had that car at the head of this little pack rather than third in this four car grouping. Five and a half minutes remain. Some drivers start and set their cars fastest laps of the race, even at this late stage. Best place of car doing that at the moment is car number 74. With uh, a very good lap last time around, and that's in the hands of Cedric Freiburg House, who took that over down in. Where does it want to be? Down in 13th position, took it over from Laura Kreiharmer. So even at this late stage, and likewise, car number 16, they're increasingly well. Nico Rindlisbacher has uh, taken over from Christian Danner as the co-driver co of uh, Benhart Laba. And the Momo Megatron team, Partrax, came in. He to set that car as fast as that. So what can 2-2 two -two do? 2-2-2 do and the Villarino. He's the fourth car in this four-car train. He's had a couple of little looks at Ike Angemar. She's been a little unsettled. Clearly another penalty. We've just seen the Generation AMR Super Racing Aston Martin coming out of the pit lane. Not after a regular pit stop, though. That's number 144. In fact, they've just had their, their third visit to the pits since they got lonely. And it's uh, Matthew George at the wheel. Battle for fifth place rages on very, very close indeed. One and a half seconds covering fifth through to eighth places. But we've been, oh, I was about to say, we haven't had a change in that position fleetingly. We had Ander Villarino getting ahead of Angemeyer, but Angemeyer had the better line out of turn four. But does he have the momentum down the hill? Because certainly more momentum carried by Ander Villarino. And now he has got ahead. So taking the wide entry gave him a smoother run through the corner. Angabai was tricked into taking the tighter inside line by the sheer amount of pressure, so at last 
a change in the top handful of cars. No change at the front, though. Still sitting on a 13-second lead. Ricardo van der Ende from Matt Nichol-Jones. Finley Hutchison, 6.3 seconds down on Matt Nichol-Jones now in third place in that number 10 McLaren. Been a peerless performance at the front of the field. Three and a bit minutes remaining, and it's still advantage all the way to the Ecris Motorsport BMW. Waiting for it. Coming to shop very soon indeed around the final corner. There it is after a couple of the Maseratis in terms of uh, position down the start finish straight, but in terms of position in the race, well clear. Slightly slower lap last time around, but uh, no need for concern. It'll be this lap and the next one for the Dutch crew from Ecris Motorsport. Gap comes down to 12.8 seconds. That's absolutely fine. It's all under control by Van der Ender. And Van der Ender, 38 years old now, but he was a multiple Formula Ford winner at the turn of the millennium. And uh, GT4 Euro champion in 2011, 2013 and 2014. You certainly feel this is title number four coming their way. Matt Nichol Jones building on a great job done by Will Moore. Looks very safe in second place, but look in the background in case there's an accident, in case there's a McLaren closing in, just coming into the background of the shot, but uh, was 7.2 seconds down in third place. As hard as Finley Hutchinson charges, it seems Matt Nichol Jones has got enough in hand. He'll still be kicking himself for the spin. It cost him six or seven seconds, but uh, really. He wasn't going to be able to pick more than tenths here and there off the race leader. Ricardo van der Ende hasn't had to press very hard indeed. He's known what he's got to do, built, built on an excellent start, excellent first half of the race from Max Cobalt. And there is number 10. McLaren down in third place. A little bit of traffic up ahead, but they're under no threat from behind because uh, Julian Duras and the street art racing Aston Martin is about 11 seconds behind in fourth place. So I think we know the identity of this, the penultimate lap of our podium visitors. So before the start, people were looking at the skies, wondering, will those dark clouds translate into rain? They haven't, and far from it. In fact, we've got a beautiful evening here at the Nürburgring. We've got another race for the GT4 European Series Northern Cup tomorrow. Today's is almost run. The street art racing Aston Martin heading to fourth place overall. Started by Jerome de May, handed over to Julian Darras. They came under a lot of pressure, but the pressure is now about four seconds, three to four seconds behind them on the track. Jamie Van Lombard leading that uh, battle for fifth place. So the race leader onto the final lap with a 12.2 seconds of our success. The third place Aston uh, McLaren, the fourth place Aston Martin in the rear of the shot, just coming into the sunshine out of the shade. And uh, whether it's gaining on Finley Hutchinson, yes it is, gained uh, 1.6 seconds, it rather matters not. It's the battle behind that may have the place changes. Fifth place, it's still Jamie Vandenbout, Gregoire de Moussier has been so close, not just on the track, but almost getting into the, under the rear wing of that car on several occasions. Still fighting over a fifth, with a bit of a gap back to Ander Villarino in seventh in the 2-2-2 Porsche Cayman and Iki Angemeyer in the 14 KTM crossbow. Gregoire de Moustier leading the way. Only by one position on the circuit, though, in the Pro-Am class, because just uh, a second and a bit behind him under Villarino, second in the Pro-Am class. But uh, nobody could do anything about the chequered flag. We've reached the top of the hour, the end of our hour. Ricardo van der Ender completing the task with a half a lap to go. Brilliant start by Max Kobel, untroubled down to turn one. And this should be their fourth win of the season. They took the two wins at the Red Bull ring back in early June, picked up another win a month later at the Slovakia ring. Win number four from pole position for Max Cobalt and Ricardo van der Ende for Ekfris Motorsport and their BMW M4. Beautifully presented, beautifully driven, only has the chicane and the final corner to complete and win number four will be theirs. Not a wheel out of place in this race, powered away from pole, had everything under control. And there, to take the chequered flag, swooping over towards the flag bearer and their own crew further down the pit wall. Victory 
by a handsome margin of a dozen seconds or so ahead of Matt Nichol Jones as he takes the last corner for the final time. So it's Aston Martin, victory to BMW, Aston Martin in second place and McLaren in the background. It was 10.7 seconds at the end. Gap between second and third, 8.4 seconds. So uh, relatively close together, but who will come home in fourth place? It should be the street art racing Aston Martin. There it is, just coming across the start finish line. That is under control. So that's number seven. Jamie van der Bout just holds on to sixth place overall, fifth place overall. And then De Moussi suddenly became concerned about the attack from behind and uh, seemed to have his eyes on that, but uh, just manages to hold off under Villarino to take the Pro-Am class honours. So four from 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And number nine, Duncan Houseman, great run for him for Las Maras Racing, brought the McLaren up to ninth place overall. And uh, third in the Pro-Am class. Just waiting for the top finisher in the Am class, and it should be Manuel Mengozzi. Here he is, if it's the 76 Porsche coming up through the evening sunshine. And there it is, well caught by the crews around the circuit. So Mengotzi will win that from uh, the Porsche Cayman of Dieter Schmidtman. And third in class should be number 11. 19th overall, but third in the AM class, which is uh, even Vlachov driving the Sin on his own. So here comes number three to come home. 18th overall, second in the AM class, but 16th overall was good for victory for Manuel Mengozzi. Well, looks like the, the, the Sin has had a spin at the final corner of the circuit, waiting for him to come home in third place in class, but is he going to fall to fourth? Because if he's passed by number 77, at one of the Maseratis with uh, Romy Dan Antonio and Fascicolo, oh dear, spin and stall. After one hour of racing, having done the whole thing solo for even Vlachov, this is a disaster. But, uh, well, as he didn't get it going, I'm afraid Vlachov has fallen to fifth place in class. <laughs> Deary me. So, 19th place and third in the AM class goes to 77, Romy Dalla Antonio. <laughs> Deary me. How disappointing. You know, he drove a good race there, even Vlachov in the sin. His only sin was to spin it at the end of the final lap after one hour. How sad indeed. But we had no rain in the race. It was threatening. It stayed away. But what we did have around the Nürburgring, around these 17 corners, was a fantastic race from the front by Max Cobalt, handing over to Ricardo van der Ende. A spirited challenge from Academy Motorsport with their Aston Martin, but they had to end up in a second. And then another car that started near the front end of the grid, the McLaren. That started fourth on the grid in the hand of Saba Moore, handed over to Finley Hutchinson. The Aston Martin ahead of them went up from eighth place on the grid, but pole to lead into the pits, to lead out of the pits, to lead to the end of the race. First Max Cobalt, and then Ricardo van der Ende. So Max plays the drums on the bonnet. They've had a just fantastic season, so Ricardo, very, very happy with life. Thirty-eight years old and happy to keep on winning for Max Cobalt, rather younger, born in nine, nine, nine years younger. Plenty of winning still in store for this young Dutchman, but uh, another one in the bag. There comes Finney Hutchinson in his McLaren into the back of shot and into third place overall. Ricardo van der Ende very happy with life. Applause, hugs all round. Let's see. And a Villarino, who came second in the Pro-Am class, coming in the background, his Porsche came in, and then Gregoire de Moustier, who won the Pro-Am class in the number four Porsche, tucked in behind. Matt Nicol jones who had that spin, and Will Moore, who had the opening stint. Really good, strong run, up for eighth place to second overall. So, great result for the Aston Martin crew. But let's go down and hear from our winners, because Dakota's caught up with Max Cobalt, who started, and Ricardo van der Ende, who brought it home. Boys, congratulations. Bringing the car home in P1 must be such a good feeling. Yeah, it's amazing. We, we knew the car was going to be good at Nürburgring. So we were looking forward to this after winning the championship in Zandvoort, our home uh, country. Uh, yeah, bringing it home here in pole position and bringing it home in P1. Delighted. So very good the driving of this guy as well. And tell me a little bit about the race about you, in your perspective. Yeah, for me, the start was good. As, as always uh, for this year, so... <laughs> 
that's going quite good. And uh, at the beginning, I think in lap two, I already had set the fastest time. So from that point on, I just tried to extend the gap. And from that moment on, just tried to relax a bit because I had quite a big gap already. And then uh, Ricardo just finished it great, so perfect. Well done to the both of you. Congratulations. Tomorrow, another one. <laughs> well, winning is a habit they clearly enjoy. And uh, that is their fourth of the championship. Incident between car number 11, that was the spun sin, and car 77 under investigation, which was uh, Romy Dallantonio's Maserati that came home in third in that class. But we'll get back to you on that. But really, let's focus on a, a fantastic win from this year's overall champions and let's hear Dakota's down in the pit lane and so plenty happening down there so Dakota more interviews down in the paddock <laughs> guys congratulations you look really happy with that yeah yeah mega result um, from p8 on the on the grid to get up to second um, after about five or six laps and then um, yeah, we just kept ourselves out of trouble, really. There was a lot of carnage, a lot of debris on the track, but we seemed to do really good. Matt just maintained it, and, uh, and here we are. And here you are. Are you looking <laughs> for another podium tomorrow? Oh, well, we need one higher, please. That would be better, <laughs> yeah. And you've got a little bit of special FaceTime, have you, going on? Um, yeah, I've got, I've got the whole family here who are... Um, well, they were, they were here, but they're uh, on a beach in Portugal. <laughs> Technology. Well, congratulations. I've been rushed to the podium. Let's Thank go. You very much. Well, thanks, Dakota. It's nice to know that Will, Will Moore's family have found the lure of the beach much more enticing than being here. But uh, these afforded him five seconds. But that was a great run from Matt Nickel Jones and Will Moore. But let's take a look at the results. Victory by 10.7 seconds for the BMW crew, Max Cobalt and Ricardo van der Ende. No wonder they're already this year's champions. Will Moore and Matt Nickel Jones up from eighth to second. Great performance. Finley Hutchinson building on the start by Saba Moore to make the McLaren third at the end and then Jerome DeMay, Julian Darras, the second Aston Martin in the top four and they were just always ahead of the battling behind and the best of the KTMs, Mad Cilia Haug and Jamie Vandenbout just holding off the top finisher in the Pro-Am class. Sixth place overall for Alain Ferté and Grégoire de Moustier and at the end of the race they had Ander Villarino right under their tail in seventh place overall. Top car in the AM class was uh, Getty and Mengozzi who won that in 16th overall. But then of course we saw the spinner right at the end, number 11, even Vlachov, classed as 22nd, 23rd, but he should have been rather higher and should have been third in the AM class, a spin at the final quarter. How galling, but it's been great racing here at the Nürburgring. We'll do it all over again tomorrow. And for the teams that thought it might get wet during the race, they proved themselves wrong. But you have to guess, you never know what you're gonna get in the Eiffel Forest. But look at the evening sunshine over the trees in the distance beyond the Nürburgring. It's a fantastic evening of racing and the penultimate race. Let's take a look at the start of the race. The Aston Martin, black one, look for it, gaining positions hand over fist, but Reinhardt Koffler got it wrong, out of second place on the run to the first quarter. Maybe he'd fallen to third, then he fell to about 26th in the gravel. But it was uh, the BMW all the way from the front, had that clean start in the hands of Max Cobalt. And increasingly, those behind were tripping over each other. Fantastic mid-pack action. Some less fantastic mid-pack action. 94 and 30 having a little bit of a clash out of turn one. Then the most extraordinary moment in the race when 34 managed to clatter. That's Leonard Marionek. Clattered the back of the Aston Martin. Da did damage to itself. And it's quite possible 31 did damage to itself. Uh, and how's that for a save by Alain Ferte down at the hairpin. <laughs> so did he. Collected by the street art racing. Aston Martin behind, but eventually the tattered bodywork on 34 required a visit to the pits for a drive-through penalty, and that dropped it out of the mix, so it didn't matter how hard Leonard Marinette pushed on. There is that drive-through penalty being served. That little drive-through really cost them position. Then it was time for the pit stops, and look how busy the pit lane became. A slightly unsafe release here, straight in front of another Porsche. So the 75 crew gained a drive-through penalty for their efforts. But into the pits from the lead, out of the pits, first and second, separated by about the same margin. But then we reckon there's a spin for Matt Nickel-Jones. He lost six seconds in one lap, and that dropped him, doubled his disadvantage. And how close would you like the cars to be down at turn eight at the bottom of the hill? But the closest racing really was this battle. But between sixth and ninth position, sometimes fifth and eighth. But nobody got close to the BMW at the front. And here is the chequered flag. One hour of racing completed. Win number four for this year's champions. And Max Cobalt, standing in the pit lane, was delighted as Ricardo van der Ender bought the Ecris M4 back home with a clear victory ahead of the Academy Motorsport Aston Martin, which is still to arrive back in the paddock. Such was 
the advantage they enjoyed at the finish. Now all those drivers standing in behind the podium, waiting to go out to enjoy the spoils after some great racing this afternoon. But really, the Ecris Motorsport crew had it all wholly under control. I'm waiting for the top three to come out. There's a championship organiser walking in, Max Brahms, waiting for Finley Hutchison and Sharba Moore should be the first ones out. They finished third overall. But in fact, we seem to be getting... No, Max Cobalt seems to be coming out. I think he needs to move to one side to let the third place crews come out. Look how many trophies are there. There's our third place crew. Sharba Moore following out after Finley Hutchinson. Good run for them in the McLaren. Second place, Will Moore and Matt Nickel-Jones. Aston Martin crew still trying to speak to their family on the beach in Portugal. Will Moore's family. Add on to the top step. Ricardo van der Ende on the left and Max Cobalt on the right of your screen. So now the Dutch national anthem. So smiles are plenty up on the top step, ready, winners' caps back on. Ricardo van der Ender and Max Kobold, it's been a fantastic uh, season for them. And for Matt Nichol-Jones and Will Moore, they're delighted to be up there right in the mix. I think that result pushes them up to second place in the championship. Championship organiser Max Brahms handing out the trophies. So yeah, it's one each, Starber Moore reckoning that he should share with Finley Hutchinson, but uh, a good run for them in the McLaren. Aston Martin crew, Academy Motorsport, trophies for them. They're going on FaceTime live by the looks things, but, uh, well, it's quite a collection for Ecris Motorsport, for Ricardo van der Ender and Max Cobalt, but silverware is why people go racing. And, of course, a, a trophy as well for Ecris Motorsport team. And again, it's been a, a fantastic season for them. Great presentation of the car and just such a professional job done by all concerned. Quick on the track. Are they quick with the fizz? Podium girls getting out of the way just almost in the nick of the time. Almost isn't enough. But there are the top three at the end of the first of the two races. This is the final round of the 2017 GT4 European Series Northern Cup. It's been busy in GT4 and it's going to get busier more and more. Manufacturers getting involved more and more. More people and teams lining up cars to come out racing again next year. It's been a huge season of growth, but uh, whoever's going to win next year is going to have to hit the gold standard. And the gold standard is the Ecris Motorsport BMW team with drivers Ricardo van der Ender and Max Cobalt. They set the standard. Will they do so next year? Well, we'll find out. But we've still got one more race to go, of course. The Sunday race at the Nürburgring. And I'm sure that will be every bit as action-packed as this one here on the Saturday afternoon, turning into the evening at the start of autumn here at the Nürburgring. More snaps for the at uh, the Equipe Vershaw McLaren duo. More podium ceremonies for the Pro-Am and Am classes. It's been a great afternoon, a packed day of uh, qualifying and racing here at the Nürburgring. We're looking forward to doing it all over again tomorrow. And, uh, the track was slightly damp this morning, rain threatened, we had a few little spits through the course of the day, but it was one hour of clear racing action, and now it's the podium for the Pro-Am class. On the right-hand side, Luke Brahms and Duncan Hausman in their Las Maras McLaren. Second place to the 222 crew, the Porsche racing crew, TFT Racing, Nicola, Nicolas Leutvila and Ander Villarino. They're down up onto the top step, Alain Ferte and Grégoire de Moustier, so the Marseillais playing.
great to have Alan Ferté back racing again. Started, found his helmet again a couple of seasons ago and is doing more and more and doing it with great aplomb. Talent who should definitely have gone to Formula One right on the cusp. Along with his brother Michel, so strong in Formula 3000 in the early years of that, that championship. But uh, great to have the, the veteran Frenchman coming out to play all over again. So time for the first of the pram runners. I think they look as though they're saving it for another day or saving it to share with their, their teams as they will celebrate not into the night. There's another day of racing to follow. But for Luke Brahms, father of the championship organiser, Max Brahms, uh, he's happy to share his with anybody who was standing down below. In fact, I think he was sprinting the roof of his last morass racing McLaren. Final set of uh, trophies getting ready to be presented the flags being uh, reset because we have the am trophy presentation and victory in that class went to Auto Orlando sport with their porsche 911 and of course we had that uh, sort out on the final lap where even vlachov went for a spin we know and here is the third place crew Romy D'Antonio on the left and Giuseppe Fascicolo for their Scuderia Viorba course. Maserati up the hop into second place will be coming the number three crew. Pro Sport Performance, Carsten Struer and Detlef Schmidtman celebrating up on the podium, but the top step will be occupied by car number 76 crew. Autolando Sports, Giuseppe Jetsi and Manuele Mengozzi. So the Italian national anthem for Auto Lando Sport. In fact, an Italian team in third place overall as well. But uh, am honours to Mengozzi and Gessi on the top step of the podium. So hard fought trophies for them. In the end, about oh, nearly half a minute clear of Schmidtman on the left and the taller figure of Carsten Struer. They're happy with their afternoon's work. trophies for the winners everyone on the top step and that is the racing concluded for the Saturday at the Nürburgring and again the drivers saving their fears for friends and family or hopefully with their mechanics but Carson Strew is going to let rip great afternoon of racing we've got to do it all over again tomorrow it's been fun the GT4 European Series Northern Cup has grown and grown and will continue to do so but right now the afternoon belongs to the race winner this afternoon. They led from the start at Chris Motorsport with their BMW M4. Max Cobalt started from pole, got clean away from the pack, and then just stretched the advantage out. Ricardo van der Ende took it over, and as the pairing have done for the f many times before this year, this was their fourth win. No wonder they've already landed the championship before they even came here to the Nürburgring, but this was just emphasizing their class. The whole show, absolutely fantastic. But it's the story in GT4 is about people racing towards the tail of the field as much as those at the front but the standard at the front gets better and better and it's a tribute to all involved we don't know what the weather's going to do tomorrow but we had one hour of fun racing and look at the conditions now absolutely brilliant here at the Nürburgring but the sun is shining most fiercely on the Ecris Motorsport crew one more time race winners Max Cobalt and Ricardo van der Ender 2017 champions